And since we have gifts, rejoice charismatics, the word is charismata, that differ according to the grace given to us. It's really not sensible to pray for gifts in the abstract. Lord, give me this gift or give me that gift. You need to find out your place in the body and then you'll know what gifts you need. As a matter of fact, God will begin to give them to you. Let's look at the list of charismata. And this is not a comprehensive list of charismata. You find another list in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And one of the most exciting, just to whet your appetite, if you know what it is, celibacy. Is that the one you've been praying for? <laughs> First Corinthians chapter 7, Paul says, Every man has his charisma, one after this man, another after that. Mine, he said, is celibacy. And I could pray for everybody to be the same. But he said, I won't. <laughs> so, don't limit your concept of spiritual gifts to one or two things like miracles or healings or prophecy. Let's have a look. Verse 6, since we have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let each exercise them accordingly. That's put in by the translators, but I think it's legitimate. If prophecy, according to the proportion of faith. Now that is very, very important. Because a lot of people begin to prophesy, they have see exciting results, and their minds get blown up, and they get beyond the proportion of faith, and they start to say things that are not from God. And they create, in many cases, a lot of confusion. Don't go beyond your faith. Don't strain yourself. I see when people strain for results, they get into problems. Whether it's healing or whatever it is. The most exciting healings that have taken place in my ministry usually happened, as I've been saying, by accident. You know. I didn't plan it. Let it come naturally. Let it flow. The Holy Spirit is compared to olive oil. Olive oil flows. It's not jerky. It's very smooth. All right, let's look quickly at the other possibilities. If service, or it could be deaconship, because the word deacon is just a translation of the Greek word for a servant. So if you're to be a servant, then specialize in serving. And serving is an art, you know that? One thing I've learned about people who serve, because Ruth and I have to have people. When you're serving a person, you don't do things the way you think you ought to do them. You do things the way the person wants them done. Even whether you don't, whether you think it's right or not. That's an art. To adjust your thinking to the thinking of another person and do it the way the other person wants. Uh, we're going on. He who teaches in teaching. And I want to say that the Bible says we shouldn't have too many teachers. You know that? First James, James chapter 3. Don't be a teacher unless God has called you. Stay out of it. I know God called me. Whether I'm a good teacher or a bad teacher, one thing I know, God specifically called me to be a teacher of the Scripture. I can't help teaching. You stand me in a corner on my head and I'll start teaching. It's just in me. But uh, I hear people teaching. I think, yeah, God, he has a gift, but that's not it. <laughs> All right. He who exhorts in exhortation. You see, a lot of people have got this wonderful gift of exhorting, but it isn't teaching. Don't become a teacher when you should be an exhorter. Stick in your profession. There are some wonderful evangelists, but when they become teachers, every time they open their mouth, they put their foot in it. If you give, it says, do, do you realize there's a ministry of giving? It's a ministry. It's a gift. Do it with it says liberality, but simplicity. Don't make a big deal out of the fact you're giving. I thank God for the ones that support our ministry, but I have discovered that some people want to manipulate us by their gifts. And we have to be very, very careful that we don't go that route. Our next one is showing mercy. That's a gift. 
But I have to say it's a gift I don't have. I mean, for me to visit people in hospital is a chore. I'll do it if it's absolutely necessary. But I have friends who are like a duck in water when they get to the hospital there. They, it's their natural gift. And it's a very precious and wonderful gift. And I thank God for the people who've had gifts of mercy that they've been to me with. But I just know, for me, it's not a gift. I do it as a duty if it's necessary. Some people are not happy unless they're showing mercy. So if that's your gift, cultivate it. Whatever your gift is, cultivate it.